Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. And today we have a special treat. Um, one of the best systems in the world. Uh, I'm going to let the, uh, the film roll here and just comment a bit on it. What system do we have here today? Um, well, starting with the turntable, this is the uh, TT3 prototype, the final prototype. <sighs> Uh, with its oh, with yeah. its power supply down there, and um, crazy an ANS9 transformer. And it, uh, the turntable has the IO1, which is the basic um, the basic draw cartridge, and the ARM3, which is a fairly basic ARM, and M9 preamp. Yeah, you can get a, a much better motor for this now and better ARM. And of course, uh, I'm not sure about the cartridge. Uh, yeah. and of course, you can get you can go from M9 to M10, which is uh, quite a bit better. With this power supply. Right here, viewers, yeah, and uh, here's the power supply down here. Yeah. And, Crazy. Uh, the CD is a CDT6 uh, that's running into. Oh, CDT6. I haven't had the chance to listen to that, but I've heard the the model before that, and it was just crazy, crazy. CDT six. That must be, without a doubt, the best CD player in the world. I mean, the previous one before that, completely kicked everything. Um. Uh, yeah, I just completely beat everything. Um. Wow, I'd like to listen to that. The R2 R letter prototype number three. R2. We are currently. Audio note R2 R. It hasn't yet been released as far as I know. The closest thing to this is the um, fifth element DAC, which is almost R2 R. I think later it's going to be R2 R. But just have a look at this. You're looking at the best DAC in the world a prototype of it it's a couple of years ago um crazy crazy yeah num number six or number seven i've lost count um and look just here these are proper resistors when when you see r2r decks like denafreps and stuff like that they have small blobs of metal that's not r2r this is r2r um, I've actually seen a development of this that is more advanced from from audio note that uh, sadly didn't didn't make it with a lot better resistors and um, oh, just look at this silver traffic silver 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 I don't know if it's choker traffic whatever it is uh, these are like the best some of the best caps in the world these resistors over here i'm not sure if i've heard those but uh i think i have some similar ones in my in my dac um crazy i can't see what tubes he's running but this is how a dac is supposed to look like all of this trafo coupling with silver same silver all over the place not just any silver but audio note silver um Oh, amazing. With the ladder. Ladder deck, yeah. Resistor ladder there. When do you think this will come to market? Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I keep promising people that we'll do something with it, and then we discover something new. New, that, that, that makes it sound at. better, yeah. And then yeah. it's, you know, oh, we should investigate this as well before we do anything. Jesus. So, uh, yeah, what can you say? Well, anyway, the uh, power... And I'll just, just look at him. He's like totally <laughs> mind-fucked. When you have a system like this, I haven't heard his system in particular, but I've heard systems at this level, audio note systems. You're, you're in heaven, okay? There's nothing wrong at all with audio notes at this level. <sighs> just so thick and luscious and you know, I mean you'll you'll look like Peter Quartop in this picture just totally mind blown like you've just landed on on planet earth um having visited another planet um yeah, let's just have more look at this so the gaku ones 
Um, Gaku. On these ones, I'm, I'm basically in the process of, of testing the sound vein, yeah, those the are really good tubes. The production valves we're using. So. This is 2017. He's actually made some valves that are, uh, I think, a tiny bit better than these. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, I've had a chance to, 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 to see those valves. And um, these peace vein uh, um, valves are really good. Really, really, really good. Some of the best 211 valve um, uh, tubes that, that exist. But there are some that can get quite a bit better uh, from audio note. Um, I think they have some kind of red or green coloring. I can't remember. Well, this has got the... It would normally have New York's Doc 211s in it. Mm -hmm. But the, this has the standard Pavan. Mm -hmm. And 211 cents. Per van. And via some yeah. Sogon speaker cables into a pair of uh, the uh, A and E Sogon speakers. A D A N E Sogon speakers. That's like the big daddy speakers of them all. He's actually since this video made a Soto version, which actually has I think twice as big, uh, twice as thick cable in it. Uh, with twice as many threads and um, I haven't heard that one but I heard this one and this is just to die for the speaker this is this is the go-to speaker of them all the best combination of everything in the world w would you be able to find a speaker that's perhaps a tiny bit more uh this or that uh yeah you will always be able to to find a speaker that perhaps has a higher high or a, a deeper deep but the the most important thing about the speaker is the glue that keeps everything together that makes everything sound new alive dramatic this is this is the ultimate basically the ultimate speaker there's of course a newer version the soto that i mentioned but this is a crazy speaker. I wish I had this speaker. Um, the one I have is SPEHE, which is like seven or eight models below this. And it actually has a quite similar sound, the one I have, compared to this, even though mine only costs like, I don't know, around $10,000, where this one costs... I'm not ex I'm not entirely sure if it's like $250,000 or or a million dollars. I'm not I'm not I'm not exactly uh sure about the price. I I've never really um taken it into consideration, so I never looked it up, but this this is the go-to uh, big daddy speaker. Um all the all the really fancy big speakers that cost more than this, forget it. The the integration, the naturality the tonality, the human touch doesn't come near um, the quality of this speaker. They might be able to do some few things, perhaps 5% of the music better than this speaker, but I'm willing to, to give that up to get this speaker. Th this is the ultimate, ultimate speaker. Uh, and of course, they made a new one. So records all over the place. When you've got a speaker here and you've got records all over the place, you have to notice that it will, to some degree, dampen the sound. So I also heard this from, from some people visiting Peter that this is probably the best sound ever that they've heard in their life, but they would like to hear it in a different room where you don't have all the records because the records somehow dampen uh, the speaker and remove a tiny bit of that energy. So if, if this was like a wall and, and like a square wall ending here, you would have a lot more like immediate response. Um, and also the windows at the back here, perhaps not the best thing for imaging, but I mean, who the hell cares? When you have this level of sound, even only playing it at probably 60% of its potential that I'm guessing that it's doing in this room here, is it's just gonna blow your mind totally you, you're not gonna find a, a single error with the music so uh, and, and it looks 
judging by all the records that he has, I think he ha he's he's got some pretty special records. You won't see any 1970s best of uh, records here. I mean, the, these are these, these look like pretty expensive records, the good ones. Which I only got yesterday, so uh, they're a bit uh, stiff sounding at the moment. Oh, he got them yesterday. I mean, the I think the the. The eight or ten biggest models of Audio Note E, they take f almost forever to to um, to play in, especially the really really big ones because of the big uh, capacitors inside. And what you really need to do is when you get a speaker like that, run a lot of white, brown, deep purple noise tracks for for like ten minutes, an hour, different volumes. Then you shut off the uh, the power to the whole system wait like eight hours and the next day you do the same thing and then you can go through this burn-in process within a month instead of having to perhaps wait a whole year i mean when you have speakers at this level um there's there's just so much silver that that needs to really um what do you call it break in burn in and it's it's really extreme once you get up to this level. I remember listening to um, this speaker at a friend's place, and it just took forever to burn in. It took it literally took like half a year to burn in, and he he was just playing music every day for for several hours, you know. So if you think when you when you listen to a speaker like this, and you think it's a bit reserved, it's perhaps a bit dark, it's a bit uh, it could be a bit more this and that way. Once you get like a month into um, using this, breaking it in, you'll notice that suddenly it will release a lot more energy and be a lot more exciting. It's incredibly stiff and dark to start with. Um, but once it's fully uh, been burned in, my God, does it just deliver a punch and depth you've you've never never really gonna hear uh ever again uh it's just an amazing sound yeah they're, they're just breaking in viewers they soft they softened up quite a lot overnight so what's the difference between overnight, the sogon yeah. and the and sec the signatures got, the that we have well, in our basically system. the the uh, sec signature uses copper caps in the crossover mm -hmm. this as you see, just still a couple of uh, models above um, the one I have. See, I would say with A and E speakers, there's the A and E LX. When you when you get into the range of A and E speakers, which make a huge difference compared to the previous generations of A and J speakers, then you get up to my model, which is like eight models above that. Huge difference again. Huge difference. And you go from my model to the SCC signature, I think it's called. Again, huge difference. A lot more pressure, a lot more bass, a lot more depth. It's just a, a lot less bubbity bubbity boop and a bit more like smack smack pressure. Uh, it almost like it, it's almost like the, the speaker is just jumping out and, and raping you, especially if you have it in a in, in a small room. It's just absolutely amazing that se signature one but when you go from the se signature one to the sogon one it's like again like two or three times the effect of what the the sec signature does it just like really deep deep music juices uh, silver caps that's it okay. and, silver caps does a the, huge uh, the difference cost of the silver caps is the audio notes silver caps so. If you took those silver caps out and you replaced them with, with Jensen or Jensen or whatever they're called, it would sound horrible. The timing would be off and, and the, the sound stage would be a lot more flat. You would lose so much. I, I, I'm guessing if you took those silver caps out that are probably the most expensive silver caps that Audino have ever uh, dealt with, if you take them out and replace them with silver caps from Janssen or something like that for like a 20th of the price. You would not be able to recognize it's an audio note speaker. That alone. 
that tells you something about the quality of silver caps that they have. And also I noticed my 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 friend told me this. There's a certain timing with audio notes, uh, silver caps, resistors, and, and such. So even though it's the same specs, uh, spec silver caps, the, the timing, the musical timing won't quite be there, even though it's technically supposed to fit with something like uh, a Janssen or Mondorf or Doulon or whatever silver caps that, that had the same value. So that's something to take into consideration. So th that is basically the the main reason and the and and the cable that comes with it why it's so darn expensive well, it more than doubles the, the cost of the speaker yeah like you said <laughs> just i love it capacitors that double the, the price I, I just, double uh, more than double, more than double I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well let's get a scope for where we are here we're in brighton england i would like to we're have on a that. gorgeous street that system. This is a wonderful listening room. Oh. As we pan around, there's Terry. It's actually quite small. He was taking room. a seat. And Andy very deep himself. That room. And, a theory. <laughs> and, and, a, and a bit of reading material here, please, for the viewers. That's not very deep. Uh, we, How many meters is that? It's like How many records three and a half, four meters deep. Just... Well, in here, we, yeah. Uh, yeah. From the speaker to, to, to the back end. Yeah. 14 or 16,000. That's shocking. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's um, about half of my proper collection. Mm -hmm. So we have a read of that. That refers to what I was talking about yesterday. You know, when you have a, a, a room that isn't uh, very deep, I noticed this at, at a couple of friends' places. What happens is that you basically become a, a, like a sardine in a can that just gets like, <clears throat> like really squashed. Um, so what they're doing is... <laughs> They're, they're actually listening within the, the, the field of, of the speaker. They're not even listening to, I would say, half of what the speaker can do just alone because of the room. If he had a room, if he could extend the room two meters behind, eh, that would almost make it perfect. And if he could remove the whole window area and make it more, more square, it would be more correct. I would do that. Um, I mean, the sound is going to crush you. <laughs> uh, I would, though, st still like to listen to it. it. It must be incredibly thick and vul vulgar and with a lot of pressure in this small room. I mean, how many square meters is that? That must be like well, let's 20 do, um, square meters. Like to do well, viewers after at we have the a most. system walkthrough, we do some listening. And what better than Caricello? So what we're going to do is we're going to... I mean, you need like a... You need seriously with a speaker like this, you need minimum 30 square meters, it's more like 35, maybe almost as a minimum when you're listening to a speaker like this. I mean, it's going to it, it's going to gang rape you <laughs> in, in a small room like this. I've heard, I've heard this speaker in a room that was 30, 30 square meters and it, it almost crushed me literally it 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 almost crushed me we were also playing on, on the on the short length of the room but it it, it was like oh, <laughs> crazy you're gonna pick the needle up and start it over turn the volume up a little bit oh uh, yeah and just gonna... have a look at that peter is is one of those old-fashioned uh traditional guys so he runs with these uh, English plugs. You can see that he's put his audio note silver on it. That's actually a very, very, very good thing to do. You're going to get a very raw and unfiltered sound. And that's not bad. W when you're doing it at this level, this is the level where you actually might want to consider not having a... Uh, a really good power box like I do. I have a ISIL 8 mini sub access box, which is a hell of a lot better than this. But it does to a small degree impose its own character on the sound. It does clean it up. It does, in a, in a tiny bit way, it does normalize the sound to a certain degree to remove 
like i don't know 90 percent of the harshness and, and and the noise and all of that if you're doing this the way that peter's doing it if you're doing it with with the highest quality silver cables those are most likely um audio note silver cables if, if you're doing that and you have english plugs which are a lot more solid than the ones that we have in in europe they don't vibrate as much they're a lot more solid the contacts if you do that you, you can you can you can actually get away with dirty power and using dirty power to your advantage this is this is crazy good sound what you will notice is that when you have all of this dirty power it almost acts as a what do you call it a taste enhancer a, a power enhancer a, just like this raw energy of of uh, I, I don't know what to call it uh, unknown force that just uh, almost crashes into you um when you do it at this level this there's, there's still a, a lot of control and there will be a lot of noise but it it will sound extremely good so you could in theory replace this with my box isolate mini sub axis and run the same cables on it and then you'll get a lot better uh, black levels a lot better separation it would be a lot more clear and it would go in a direction more towards what what the younger generation would want to listen to where everything is cut more out and you can understand the the, the what the why the where uh, of the music in a more informative kind of way when you're doing it this way sound becomes very raw and to a degree where it is is a lot more harsh is a lot more noisy but it 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 trust me it it all it sounds really really good in it in a very different way you you almost have to listen to it for yourself to to really believe it um one of the big differences um is the volume control there isn't a lot of volume control on raw power but if you have a really good power box like i have the volume control is a lot more stable i wouldn't say locked but it's a lot more stable so you don't have to go back and forward to the to the system and, and turn the the volume up and down um but but yeah it, it creates a sense when you're using raw power like this it creates a sense of more depth um a bass that goes deeper a, a deeper sound stage just making everything a lot more heavy giving it more substance giving it more uh, natural color and glow and it, it's really good at this level so so you should if you ever get the chance try those two different opposites where, uh, of, of setting the system up put you in the listening chair here we go <laughs> Notice that he has one, two ongakus. That is a lot better when you have a really good preamp, like an Audio Note M9 that he has. You could get an M10 that is that is, that is a bit better, and you could you know get some better newer valves from from Audio Note, and of course the the whole turntable setup. I think they have some some bigger and better uh, motors now, and 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 a better tone arm. And I've also got like a dust um, protection piece you can put on it now that they're selling. Um, what is it that I wanted to say? Um, notice the this is the glossy finish. You can get the matte, slightly boring finish, and then you can get the, the glossy finish. You have to know that when you're buying the most expensive audio note uh, models, I think it's the Sogon and the Soto, you cannot get them in matte finish. 
you have to get them in, in this more expensive uh, finish. Um, the reason why I'm mentioning this is that the glossy finish actually sounds not quite as good as the matte finish. Don't ask me, don't ask me how that works. Um, but the glossy finish makes the sound more, what can you say, forward, um, hi-fi, uh, harsh. Um, I, I prefer the matte finish. Also, some of my friends, uh, they also prefer the matte finish. I find it a pity. Uh, this is one of the few negative things uh, about audio. No, I find it a pity that you can't get the most expensive speaker in a matte finish unless you contact audio note and then get them to make it in a matte finish because the matte finish gives you a more settled down to earth and comfortable um what do you call it acoustic acoustic that's the word so just know this because as soon as you get into the middle range of audio note you can you can always choose the high glossy finish or the matte finish and the glossy finish looks so much better many times. I think this is like olive tree or something like that that he has. So my speaker, I'll, I'll soon end, sorry. My speaker that is below my friend's speaker. My, my friend has El Nico, which is like one or two models above the one I have. My speaker sounds better than his speaker because I have the matte finish he has the glossy finish and I have a decent room and he has a really bad room that makes the the speaker sound a lot more harsh. So that that's a reality you have to take into consideration when you're listening to audio note. It is a very sophisticated and still very simple way of dealing with sound with, with audio note. You can go in many directions like like notice he's he's angled the speakers at this angle it makes it pretty aggressive and in your face in such a small room i would perhaps angle them slightly more out i don't know um that's what i would do in, in such a small room you could also go with a higher stand on the speakers to get a bass that is less settled uh, less boomy uh, something to think about you could take the speakers out to make to make them slightly more alive out towards you as a listener uh, but still then you're more within the range of, of the speaker um, you could on the back of these speakers you could put single wire on them to give it more of a dum -de dum -de dum -de dum -de dum -de kind of kind of flow where it's got more time <clears throat> to release the energy and the the um the timing between the treble and the bass and, and mid-range has more what do you call it it just has more time to work together and it creates a more settled homey down to earth sound you could do what peter has done or what, what many of my other friends um have done run uh by wire so you run it directly from the uh the the amps over to the the bass and, and the treble this will give you um <clears throat> this will give you a lot better sound um i think i'm actually wrong about that uh sorry sorry guys I'm thinking about the lower models. With these models here, I don't think you have a choice of uh, bi wire, single wire. I can't remember it. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm mixing it up. This model is special, so you don't have terminals on the back now that I think about it. But but with other audio note speakers, you can do what what I said. Um, so 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 yeah yeah interesting. <laughs> Thank you. 
I can actually get an impression of how it sounds through this recording, even though it's not nearly as good as being there. Let me just elaborate on that, what I mean. civilized world. Oh, well, thank you very much. Peter Kocha from Oleano for a, what a spectacular session. It was just to, to die for. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, just wanted to close off with a, uh, with a small thing here. Um, I could, if I had this sound uh, system here, I could easily make it two times better the sound i would okay first of all when you listen to this recording you notice that the the, the whole what do you call that uh reaction of the sound is very much like just you can just look at the the the, the mouse down here it, it the mouse marker it's it's like uh, 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 and, and and you get that a lot um this this measurement of of sound when you're dealing with with dirty sound when you're not filtering it you're getting the full violence the full reaction the full unloading of the sound it makes the sound also at this level very spicy tasty meaty it's a huge amount of substance and I like that. I like that at, at this level. But I also like the way that I listen to my music is when I play it, for example, with an Isolate Mini Sub Axis, one of the best power boxes out there. When I have that, I get a lot more uh, blackness, separation between the instruments. And I get this movement more, like... Uh, 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 I get a lot more stable volume. So the positioning of everything that's happening in the soundstage, it's just a lot more 
informative where this priority here is a lot more raw and released and um what do you call it merciless <laughs> uh, it where it just like fully unloads and and does its thing and it it's it's a nice thing to experience those two opposites because it it can make the speaker really nice and heavy and and juicy and when you get let's just compare this system to to the cheaper systems when when you get all of these modern hi-fi systems in the lower class and you have smaller speakers and you have all this filtering and you have these mixture of cables and food take plugs and all of that you don't get nearly as much <clears throat> sense of natural depth uh, it's almost as if it's sitting on the sound and it's nice and it's polished and everything's kind of separated and it's a nice thing to experiment with not just on on this super high level system but just in, in general, trying those two opposite ways of setting up a, a sound system. Um, I would really like to, to own this uh, system one day. Um, perhaps that will happen one day. Um, I'm guessing price-wise, we're up in about $2 million for this system. And I'm pretty sure this, this system will beat basically everything in the world and could still be a lot better if you had a room that was twice as big and uh, if you didn't have the whole window area here at the back. Um, I think it would be a, a lot better. And I would also like to hear it with the new Audio Note CD DAC integrated the the top one that they just came out with I can't remember what it's called CDX DAC five whatever I think that would in theory be better than this CDT six and I'm not sure I'm not sure but when you're bypassing cables and at this level doing it at, at such a high level of quality I think it could be a hell of a lot better um, but but. I haven't heard this system in particular, but I've heard a couple of systems uh, with the same speaker and the same turntable and the same combination of double Ongaku with an M8, M9 and an M10. And um, even if you only go for the M8 uh, version, it sounds awesome. Um, and funny enough, I would even be able to settle perhaps with with a smaller M3, but then have to be an M3 signature. That would still sound ridiculously awesome. But once you get used to this, this, this type of sound with the M8, 9 and 10, where everything's in silver uh, and, and, and basically made as, as what is best possible, um you get used to a sort of naturality with all this silver that if you have to go then back and and use some of the the copper lower copper uh, models from audio note you would so you would then hear at that point that copper just can't sound as natural as deep as responsive and as informative and it can't do structure nearly as good so you get like um the clean lines between the the artist the the uh, the instruments and you can't get anything that, that that's near the the black level with all these uh, expensive audio note models so um it's a funny thing it's a funny thing how your own reality can can change because if you never listen to this if you never listen to these top models with all of this silver stuff, if you just listen to like an Oga Ongaku, uh, standard Ongaku, and then you have uh, like an M3 signature preamp set up for like, I don't know, a tenth of the price, you would still be 100% satisfied not feeling that there's anything 
that um, that you're missing out on. But it's it's funny how then when you hear this, you 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 then at that point you're thinking, oh my god, how can I have listened to the other stuff before? It wasn't nearly as deep, responsive, natural, uh, and and so on and so on. It it it's a funny thing how that works in uh, in in high five. Yeah, that was everything, and uh, thanks for watching. And remember to like and subscribe. Bye.